Hey everyone, Krista here. In the wizarding world of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando is an incredibly magical place. In this video, I'm going to go over absolutely everything there is to see in the wizarding world in both Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley, from attractions, shops, dining, and more, so you don't miss a thing while you're there. Also, make sure to stick around to the end to get some tips and tricks to get the most out of your trip. So let's get into it. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando Resort is made up of two different lands, Hogsmeade Village at Islands of Adventure and Diagon Alley that you can find at Universal Studios Florida. We're going to start our magical adventure where it all started at Universal Orlando, Hogsmeade Village at Islands of Adventure. Hogsmeade Village is located in the very back of Islands of Adventure and was the very first Harry Potter land to open in 2010. Nestled at the foot of Hogwarts Castle, this snow-capped wizarding village is packed with enchanting shops, an inviting tavern, and of course, the incredible Hogwarts Castle. Hogsmeade has two entrances, the bridge entrance from the Jurassic Park area and the stone entryway that you'll come across from the Lost Continent. If you come from Jurassic Park, then you'll start your adventure with this incredible view of Hogwarts Castle. And the bridge that leads up to Hogsmeade is one of the best vantage points to admire this incredible castle. So you'll definitely want to take a moment and take in the beautiful landscape. Once you're ready for your first adventure, you'll head straight to Hogwarts Castle for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. This attraction is located inside Hogwarts Castle and has an incredible queue that will absolutely mesmerize you. You'll enter the queue through the towering castle gates and make your way through the corridors of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. While you're in line, you'll get to walk through the greenhouse where you'll see baby mandrakes. Then enter the castle's backdoor entrance as you pass by a statue of Godric Gryffindor and Salazar Slytherin. Then head into multiple rooms of the castle that include Dumbledore's office, Defense Against the Dark Arts Classroom, and the Gryffindor Common Room where you'll find more talking portraits chatting with each other. And just before you get on the ride, you'll be able to see the Sorting Hat. The ride itself is a flying adventure around Hogwarts Castle, where you'll get to visit a Quidditch pitch, face a dragon, fly through the Forbidden Forest, and avoid the Whomping Willow as you come face to face with Dementors. This ride uses a combination of practical effects as well as immersive screens for a truly unique experience. Once you leave, you'll go through Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods gift shop, where the resident caretaker of Hogwarts delights in catching students with contraband. In this dungeon-like shop, you can find unique gifts, but also keep an eye out for artifacts that once belonged to unlucky students while you're there. Just outside of Filch's Emporium is where you'll find the Flight of the Hippogriff Coaster. The Flight of the Hippogriff Coaster is considered a family coaster, but don't overlook it. This coaster offers incredible views of the castle and a village, and even a lifelike hippogriff animatronic. This roller coaster will also ride through Hagrid's pumpkin patch before swooping past his hut. Continuing further into Hogsmeade, you'll encounter a small stage where a couple of different shows take place. Throughout the day, you can find the Frog Choir, where a small choir of Hogwarts students and their giant croaking frogs will perform several wizarding songs. And during the holiday season, they'll even perform festive holiday songs for the crowd. Also throughout the day is the performance of the Tri-Wizard Spirit Rally. During the Spirit Rally, you'll see students from Durmstrang and Bobatons perform. The Durmstrangs will demonstrate their aggressive fighting techniques with their staffs, and the Bobatons will perform a graceful dance. 
Just a short walk from the stage is one of two butterbeer carts located here in Hogsmeade. You can grab a cup of butterbeer at either cart or at the Three Broomsticks or Hogshead pub. If you don't know what butterbeer is, butterbeer is a drink that is referenced all throughout the Harry Potter books, and you can find it at Universal in several different forms. The flavor is similar to butterscotch or cream soda and has a frothy top. Butterbeer is non-alcoholic and is very addictive. You can enjoy it hot, cold, or my favorite way, especially on a hot sunny day, is frozen. But you can also find it in ice cream, fudge, potted cream, and even vegan throughout Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. And it's definitely a must try for any Harry Potter fan. Continuing on through Hogsmeade, the very first shop that you'll come across is the famous Ollivanders. And if you're not familiar, Ollivanders is where young wizards and witches come and search for their wands. This shop offers both a show and a shopping experience. And during the show, you'll get to watch this interactive experience and see the process of the wand choosing its wizard. Each show, one visitor is chosen for the experience, and at the end, it gets the option of purchasing their wand. Try and give it away. <laughs> no, it would seem this is another yeah. wizard's wand. Once the show is done, you'll enter the shop area where wands of all kinds are stacked floor to ceiling. There are over 50 different interactive wands to choose from and are modeled after characters from the books and movies. The wands come with a map of all the interactive wand locations for both Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley and don't require any batteries. They each have a reflective tip for the magic to work. And if you get too excited and happen to break your wand like Ron did, don't worry because you can return it and get a replacement wand for free. There are over nine interactive wand locations in Hogsmeade and 25 locations in Diagon Alley. Just look for the medallion on the ground and it will point the way to where you need to cast the spell. Right next to Ollivanders is Dervish and Banjas, and in this shop you can find all sorts of wizarding merchandise and Quidditch supplies that include everything from spirit gear, uniforms for each house, journals, golden snitches, brooms including the Nimbus 2001, and the Fireball, as well as so much more. And while you're here, don't miss the Care of Magical Creatures textbook locked away in this cage. But don't get too close because the book is known to snap, growl, and even charge when you pass by. Connected to Dervish and Banjas is the Owl Post. And the Owl Post is a magical post office where you can purchase postcards and other stationary items and get them stamped with a unique Hogsmeade postmark. If you would like to ship packages back home, this is also where you can have them professionally wrapped and shipped. But you can also find owl-related toys, quills, inks, and more. If you're ready for your next adventure, then you're gonna head across the way to Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Here, you'll join Hagrid on this thrilling, immersive story coaster as you fly deep into the wilds of the Forbidden Forest, beyond the grounds of Hogwarts Castle. You can ride in either the motorbike like Hagrid or the sidecar like Harry. And of course, along the way, things will go awry as you encounter some magical creatures from the movie. This coaster has an incredible seven total launches, which is the most launches of any roller coaster in the world and has a total length of nearly a mile long at 5,053 feet 
which makes it the longest coaster in Florida. Hagrid's is a truly magical, innovative, one-of-a-kind coaster and a must-ride while you're at Islands of Adventure. If you're looking for something more to eat while at Hogsmeade, then right across the walkway from Hagrid's is where you'll find the Three Broomsticks and Hogshead Pub. The Three Broomsticks is a quick service restaurant themed as a rustic tavern where you can take a seat and enjoy a great feast of tasty British fare for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Hogshead Pub has a separate entrance, but is still located within the Three Broomsticks. This is where you can enjoy some specialty alcoholic drinks and of course, more butterbeer. You'll also want to keep an eye out for the stuffed hog's head hanging over the bar because he just may snarl at you. <gasps> oh my god, I love that! If you just want a cup of butterbeer on this side of Hogsmeade, but you don't want to step inside of either Three Broomsticks or Hog's Head Pub, then there is a second butterbeer cart that is located just outside. Right next door to the Three Broomsticks is where you'll find the famous Honeydukes. And Honeydukes is a legendary sweet shop with all manner of colorful treats. You'll find everything here from exploding bonbons, cauldron cakes, fizzing whisbies, butterbeer fudge, and chocolate frogs, which of course come with a wizarding trading card in each box. Once you're done gathering all of your treats from Honeydukes, then you're ready for our adventure over to our next land, which is the Wizarding World in Diagon Alley. But before you even walk through the stone archway and start making your way over to Hogsmeade Station, don't forget to take a moment to grab a photo with the replica Hogwarts Express that's located right here in front of the archway. You'll want to make sure that you capture this shot just in case you don't get a photo with the real train at Hogsmeade Station. Once you're ready, you'll start making your way over to the Hogwarts Express train. This steam train acts as both a transportation and a ride experience and travels between Hogsmeade Village here in Islands of Adventure and King's Cross London Station located at Universal Studios Florida where you can experience Diagon Alley. Since this train does take you outside of Islands of Adventure Park, you will need a park-to-park -park ticket in order to ride this attraction. And this is not an ordinary train ride. Once you board, you will take a seat in a cabin and enjoy a two-minute ride through the British countryside as characters and creatures from the films will make an appearance. Make sure to ride this train in both directions as the experience is different each way. And when you step off the train on the other side, you'll arrive at King's Cross Station in London, where we'll have our next adventure at Diagon Alley. And after the resounding success of Hogsmeade next door at Islands of Adventure, Diagon Alley opened its doors four years later in July 2014 and raised the bar to become one of the most immersive theme park areas in the world. Diagon Alley takes everything that's awesome about Hogsmeade and improves upon it in every single way. And like Hogsmeade, there are whimsical secrets to find in every corner of this area. And if you do take the Hogwarts Express over, you'll enter the area through King's Cross Station. This station is themed to resemble the authentic King's Cross Station in London. And yes, if you're traveling through King's Cross in the opposite direction, you'll get the chance to cross through the solid brick wall between platforms 9 and 10, where the famous platform 9 and 3 quarters is located to board the Hogwarts Express. But if you're exiting, you'll enter the area through downtown London that features a number of famous British landmarks all throughout the waterfront. And once you pass King's Cross, you'll see an iconic red London phone booth on the left, where if you dial the Ministry of Magic using the number on the dial, you'll get a special message. 
On the other side of the walkway, you'll pass by a souvenir stand where muggles can purchase a selection of London and night bust themed apparel, souvenirs, and more. Once you pass the stand on the London waterfront, you'll come across the Eros Fountain modeled after the one in London's Piccadilly Circus, as well as a huge triple-decker purple bus, who my fellow Harry Potter fans will recognize as the Night Bus that appeared in The Prisoner of Azkaban. But before you leave, make sure that you stop and have a chat with the bus conductor, as well as the talking shrunken head. My hair is really bad. Look at this hair. My hair is dreadful. You see how your hair? Yeah, look at you over there. You get your braids done. Look at that. You got the leg, brother. You got the leg, brother. Put some braids in that hair. Yeah, that's how you, you can also peer in the windows to see curtains, beds, and an ornate chandelier. Just across from the night bus is a row of London homes where you'll find number 12 Grimwald Place. And if you're feeling brave, knock on the door and keep a watch outside. You may just catch sight of the familiar face of Creature the House Elf peeking out the window. Also in this area is where you'll find the London Taxi Hut, where you can grab traditional English snacks like shepherd's pie, loaded jacket potatoes, as well as hot dogs and crisps. Once you're finished exploring London, you'll enter Diagon Alley through the secret passageway. The first thing that will catch your eye is the giant dragon that sits atop Gringotts Wizarding Bank. This dragon breathes fire every 10 minutes on the dot. And if it doesn't, it's likely asleep and you'll probably want to just check back later. The Diagon Alley area is comprised of four areas, Diagon Alley, Car Kit Market, Horizont Alley, and Nocturne Alley. The first shops that you'll see as you enter on the right is Quality Quidditch Supplies and Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Quality Quidditch Supplies is where you can get all of your Quidditch-related gear and memorabilia, including brooms, golden snitches, bludgers, quaffles, and attire to show off your team spirit. And Weasley's Wizard Wheezes is a novelty joke shop run by the prankster Weasley twins, Fred and George. You won't miss this shop with its giant moving statue with arms poking through the windows. In this shop, you can find all sorts of toys, treats, and novelties, including skiving snack boxes, you know poo pills, nosebleed nougats, fainting fancies, fever fudge, and more. Make sure to look up at the top of the shop to find whimsical characters moving overhead as well as a firework show through the skylights. Just across the way is where you'll find the Leaky Cauldron. And this quick service restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and is the main restaurant for Diagon Alley, themed as the famous pub and inn that Harry and his friends frequently visited. You'll find towering cathedral ceilings, wooden beams, and a massive dining hall. The Leaky Cauldron offers traditional English fare such as fish and chips, bangers and mash, and beef, lamb, and Guinness stew served in a bread bowl. You can also get a cup of the famous butter beer here in several different forms like cold, frozen, hot, and potted. After the Leaky Cauldron, you'll see an ominous dark alleyway called Nocturne Alley. This alleyway acts as kind of a walkthrough attraction. If you're fans of the dark arts, then you'll definitely want to check this out. The alleyway is also a great spot to escape the heat since it's hidden away from the sun. The ceiling within Nocturne Alley has projections of the starry sky to make it appear like you're outdoors despite it being inside. And within Nocturne Alley, you'll find all sorts of Easter eggs and nods to the films. Also in this area is where you'll find Borgen and Burks. This dark and creepy shop is home to all things dark arts, including Death Eater mask, skulls, accessories, cursed jewelry, and other nefarious items. 
You'll exit Nocturne Alley in the far corner where you'll enter Horizon Alley right next door to the Fountain of Fair Fortune. Modeled after a traditional British pub, here is where you can get a variety of beers including Dragon Scale, Wizard's Brew, as well as non-alcoholic beverages like Gilly Water, Pumpkin Juice, and Butterbeer. At this location, you can get your Butterbeer hot, cold, or frozen. After enjoying a refreshing pint, you'll come across the magical menagerie across the walkway. In this whimsical pet store, you can find magical creatures of all sorts, including Crookshanks, Fang, Buckbeak, Fluffy, and Scabbers. There's also Cornish Pixies, Ferrets, Pygmy Puffs, and a variety of owls, including Pigwidgeon and Hedwig. If you go along the back alleyway and peek inside the store window, you'll find a snake and hear him speak in parcel tongue. Right next door to the magical menagerie is Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. You'll begin your journey by entering Gringotts Bank located beneath the massive fire-breathing dragon. Then you'll enter the lobby where you'll be in awe of all of the detail and grandeur. And hanging from the ceiling is four gigantic crystal chandeliers that will take your breath away. Then you'll see all of the goblins hard at work as you eventually arrive at Bill Weasley's office where Blurdock takes you on a tour beneath the bank to see the vaults. You'll then take the lift to the caverns below. While you're here, be sure to look up at the giant security trolls looming overhead. Once underground, you'll grab a pair of safety goggles and make your way to the cart station. Once aboard your cart, you'll venture deep into the bowels of Gringotts, where things will go awry. This ride is a combination of roller coaster with 360 degree themed sets and 3D projection systems, and is a must ride for all fans of Harry Potter. Once you make your escape from Gringotts, then you'll want to make sure to celebrate by grabbing a delicious cone of ice cream. And just across the way is the perfect spot at Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. Here is where muggles and wizards of all ages can enjoy soft serve ice cream with flavors that include butterbeer, chocolate chili, Granny Smith, Earl Grey and Lavender, salted caramel blondie, and more. And by the way, if you're finding this information helpful, I would love it if you could hit that like button and subscribe if you would love to find more amazing adventures like this in my beautiful state of Florida. I release a new video every week and the best way to be able to see them is by subscribing. Just past Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor, down Diagon Alley are two more fun shops to explore. Madame Malkin's Robes of All Occasions and Shutter Buttons Photography Studio. The first one that you'll come across is Madame Malkin's Robes for All Occasions, where you can add to your wizarding wardrobe at this fun clothing shop. In here, you'll find uniforms, scarves, sweaters, robes, ties, hats, and more. And you can also find authentic replicas of Hermione's Yule Ball Gown. While you're here, be sure to pose in front of this magical talking mirror. You may just make some comments on your outfit. Yes. Yeah. You look amazing. Right next door is Shutter Buttons Photography Studio, where you'll be guided through 12 scenes from several iconic locations for a photo souvenir to take home with you. Or you can get a moving portrait just like the one in the book and movies for an extra fee. Directly across the street is where you'll find the famous Ollivander's Wand Shop. And just like the Ollivander's in Hogsmeade, this shop offers both show and a shopping experience with over 50 different interactive wands to choose from. Say, Accio Ladder. Accio Ladder. <laughs> Definitely not.
The wands come with a map and all of the interactive wand locations for both Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. There are over 25 wand locations in Diagon Alley and 9 interactive wand locations in Hogsmeade. There are also wand locations located within Nocturne Alley. So make sure to explore the area and check your map under the black lights of Nocturne Alley for some fun surprises. With your brand new wand in hand, you'll make your way further down Horizont Alley. And the next shop that you'll come across is Eternal's Elixir of Refreshment. At this small beverage kiosk, you'll find a variety of elixirs when combined with gilly water will transform before your eyes into colorful and flavorful beverages. Unfortunately, at the time of filming, the shop was still temporarily closed, so if it's still closed during your visit, you can purchase the elixirs at the Hopping Pot and Fountain of Fair Fortune. Just across the alleyway and next to Gringotts Bank is where you'll find a golden statue of the famous Gringot himself. And right next door is Wise Acres Wizard Equipment. Here is where you'll find a variety of wizarding wares and supplies, including house theme apparel, toys, collectibles, as well as Ministry of Magic themed merch. Next door to Wise Acres Wizard Equipment is Scribulous. And here is where you can stock up on feather quill pens, ink, parchment, postcards, and other stationary equipment and writing supplies. Continuing past Scribulous is where you'll find Gringotts Money Exchange. And in this shop, you can exchange your Muggle US currency for Gringotts banknotes in 10 or $20 denominations. This can be used for purchases within Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade and select other locations throughout Universal. Unused wizard money can be exchanged back at guest services. While you're here, be sure to chat with the Gringotts Goblin and see if he'll answer back. Did you have a question? Are you a house elf? No. Walking further into Horizon Alley, you'll next come across Globus Mundi. This shop is the official travel agency of the Wizarding World, and here is where you can pick up everything for your next magical trip, including travel-themed souvenirs like passport holders, luggage tags, as well as other Globus Mundi branded items like t-shirts, mugs, and more. Just past Globus Mundi is a stage where you can find a couple of different shows throughout the day. The Tales of Beetle the Bard is a stage show presented by the Wizarding Academy of Dramatic Arts. You'll see these puppeteers use props and puppets to retail two famous tales of Beetle the Bard, who is a famous author of Wizarding Fairy Tales. The stories told in the show include The Fountain of Fair Fortune and The Tale of the Three Brothers. The other show that you can catch on the stage is Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. During this magical show, you can hear Celestina and her Banshees as they perform some of their hits, including A Cauldron Full of Hot Strong Love, You Stole My Cauldron But You Can't Have My Heart, and You Charmed the Heart Right Out of Me. Also, if you're here during the holiday season, you'll get to hear a few Christmas tunes with a wizarding twist. Be sure to check the app for show times for both of these shows. After enjoying the shows, you'll enter into the Carkit Market area of Diagon Alley. And the first place that you'll see is the Hopping Pot. And the Hopping Pot is a walk-up counter where you can cool off with a variety of drinks including butterbeer, pumpkin juice, dragon scale beers, and more. And this is a great spot to grab a drink or snack before enjoying one of the stage shows. Right next to the hopping pot is the Owl Post. This is where you used to be able to get your gifts professionally wrapped and shipped within the US. Unfortunately, at the time of filming, the Owl Post has been closed and I'm not quite sure if they'll be reopening it in the future. 
Also in Karkit Market is where you'll find Sugar Plum's Sweet Shop. And in the shop, you can stock up on sweets and treats of all kinds, including chocolate frogs, Birdie Bots, Every Flavor Beans, Sugar Quills, Exploding Bonbons, Cauldron Cakes, and more. Once you've loaded up on all of the sweets, you'll want to head across the alleyway to Wands by Grigorovich. Grigorovich is a longtime rival of Ollivander's, and here he has a small store set up within Karkit Market. And this is a really great spot to look for wands if the popular Ollivanders is just a little too crowded for you. Both Grigorovich and Ollivanders offers the same wands, so don't feel like you're missing out if you shop at either one. If you do end up staying at the Wizarding World until the evening, you'll want to make sure to hop back on the Hogwarts Express to Hogsmeade, because on select nights, you won't want to miss the nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle, where you can experience a dazzling spectacle of music and lights as a magical projection is cast against the majestic background of the castle. During this show, you'll be able to embrace your Hogwarts pride as the four houses are celebrated in this stunning show. So make sure to double check the app for showtimes because you won't want to miss this spectacular showcase. So if you are planning on spending the entire day at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, here are a few tips and tricks to get the most out of your day. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter currently spans across two parks at Universal Orlando, so if you want to make sure that you see both sides of the Wizarding World, then you're going to need a two-park ticket. And if you want to complete the adventure by taking the Hogwarts Express back and forth, then you'll also want to make sure that that two-park ticket is also a park-to-park -park ticket, so you're able to hop from one park to the other. And while you're in the Wizarding World, you want to make sure that you take your time. Even though you may be able to squeeze in everything in one day, you want to at least take a couple of days to really enjoy it. So you'll definitely want to allocate a whole day for each land if you want to give yourself enough time to experience all of it. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is still one of the most popular areas of Universal Orlando, so you'll want to expect big crowds while you're here. If you are staying at any participating Universal Orlando hotels or an eligible annual pass holder, then you'll want to take advantage of the early park admission. Hotel guests and other select groups can access one of the theme parks one hour prior to the park schedule opening time. Just make sure to double check the website to see which park is allowing early admission on the day of your visit. Also, I highly recommend using early park admission to knock out one of the popular Wizarding World attractions like Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure or Escape from Gringotts. But it's also a great opportunity to enjoy a lot of the details in the land like the wand locations and the shops without having to deal with as much of the crowd. If you don't already have a wand, then you'll want to make sure that you purchase an interactive wand at any of the wand shops. There are over 50 different interactive wand types, so there's a style to fit each and every witch and wizard. Each one of the wands comes with a map that highlights each and every single wand location throughout Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. Oh, and don't forget that there's also seven different forms of Butterbeer. If you've already tried the original, you still have hot, frozen, ice cream, fudge, potted, and vegan to try. And I highly recommend trying as many as you can while you're there. If you do have a favorite type of butterbeer, let me know which one it is down in the comments below. And speaking of treats, there are so many amazing treats that you'll be able to find throughout both lands from chocolate frogs, cauldron cakes, and every flavor beans and more. So definitely leave some room to try at least a few of these as you make your way around. 
The Wizarding World of Harry Potter is incredibly immersive, so take your time to take in all of the little details that you can find throughout the lands. Every time that I've come and I thought I've seen it all, there's always another Easter egg that I discover on my next trip. It's definitely worth a trip to walk through every shop and alleyway, as well as look through every window to not miss a thing while you're there. Plus, the ride queues are incredible. So even if you do have an express pass and can skip the lines completely, you may want to consider making your way through the queue just to experience it once because they are an experience all on their own. Last but not least, one of my favorite things about the Wizarding World is this incredible dragon in Diagon Alley. And like one of my viewers, Diamond Kingston, noticed, is that the dragon breathes every 10 minutes right on the dot. So if you want to make sure that you capture a photo of this awesome dragon, then make sure to have your camera up and ready to go a minute or two before the tens in the hour. If you've made it this far in the video, I would love to hear from you on Instagram at Krista Travels, where I release daily content on the videos I'm currently working on here on the channel. If you're spending even more time at Universal Orlando, you'll want to check out my absolute guide starting with Universal's Islands of Adventure that just popped up on the screen. In this video, I'll take you on a full tour of everything there is to see throughout Islands of Adventure so you don't miss a thing while you're there. Until next time everyone, I hope you have an amazing day and go out and enjoy some Florida sunshine.